let's get started in integrating Fastlane by PayPal using the Braintree integration. Let me begin by showing you a quick demonstration of Fastlane. I'll start by showing what a guest buyer or guest payer flow will look like. Fastlane first looks up the email provided to see if a Fastlane account exists. So I'll use an email where I know a Fastlane account doesn't exist and show you the typical guest payer flow. I'll type out an email and click on the debit credit card option. And since a Fastlane account was not detected, you'll see the normal card fields. So now we can type out the usual information to pay. I'll fast forward a bit here. Here, the guest buyer will see an option to save their info with Fastlane for faster checkouts in the future. We will attach a phone number for the one-time passwords to be sent, and as simple as that, I'll click Pay Now. This will securely tokenize the raw card information and at the same time create a Fastlane account behind the scenes. Here we are, my receipt. So now this email here, I'll copy it, and now a Fastlane account exists with this email and also tied to the phone number that I gave earlier. I'll refresh the page and change the amount again. Let's pretend I'm on a different merchant website that also uses Fastlane. The point of Fastlane is to accelerate the guest checkout experience irrespective of which website or merchant the account was created at. Now at the checkout page, Fastlane will detect the account with that email typed. Using the Sandbox one-time password or OTP, which is going to be all ones, it retrieves and displays the stored information. All that's left is to click pay now. Success once more. I'm on a shopping spree today, so let's say I buy one last thing or go to another site with Fastlane by PayPal integrated. I'll refresh the page, let's change the checkout amount, and based on internal security rules, the browser may recognize my recent authentication and deem it not necessary to send an OTP. Then it will just pre-fill my information. The last step here will be to just pay now. Success. So Fastlane was built in a way where a customer can access their Fastlane profile, autofill their information, and complete checkout in as little as one click. For shoppers that are recognized by Fastlane and use Fastlane, we want to make it easy as one click. For those who don't yet have the ability to autofill their details with Fastlane, we want to ensure that when they do create a Fastlane account for future use, that their information is accurate. The Fastlane integration is easy to add in addition to your already existing checkout with PayPal implementation on your Braintree integration. I'll explain that in this video. Let's open the project files. This is a Node.js project, but don't fret, most of it is front-end implementation with only a few API calls on the server that you should already be using in your Braintree integration. It's important to note that these project files are not created to clone into production of your website, and this video is created to guide you in an overview of those project files so that you can better learn how the integration is meant to work so that it can help you in implementing this for your business. Now you have an index file here, the api.js file is the server endpoints, and the script.js is the front-end JavaScript that's visible to the browser. For the environment variables, add your Braintree public key, private key, and you'll need a comma-separated list of domain names listed here on which sites you will use the Braintree client token. To start, we would normally send the Braintree client token from our server to the front end, but before we can do that, we first need to generate a client token that is scoped for Fastlane along with passing the list of domains in the generate client token API call. Let's open up our API.js file, which is our server side routes and methods. Here I have what you would typically have as a route to simply generate a client token and provide it to the client. To make that work with Fastlane, I've cloned this same function and named it Fastlane underscore auth. So now we use that resulting client token to run this API call that looks almost identical to a standard API call to generate a client token. But we have these new parameters here as well as we're passing the domain names here. It's grabbing this from the environment variable. We grab the new resulting client token and pass it to the the browser. Just a quick note while you're reviewing our project files, I'm making all of my API calls using Braintree's GraphQL mutations and just sending the data with the network call here. I did that for simplicity of project files to reduce dependencies, but if you're using our Braintree SDK already, keep your setup as is. It will work the same, you'll just have to do some minimal adjustment to the data that you're sending the API calls. Switching over to our script.js file, which are all the methods on the browser, we see that the first thing that happens is 
is a network call is made to call our Fastlane client token route, where previously you may have had a regular auth call here, you can upgrade it as simple as I just demonstrated on the server side file. Once we have that response, this init payment options method runs and begins the chain of events. Let's take a look at that here. I won't go over these other alternative payment methods here, but they simply render the PayPal and Venmo buttons. You can always adjust that. Let's look into what the Fastlane methods are doing. You can define some basic styles for our input fields. We will isolate the Fastlane object here, which is a collection of Fastlane specific functions. Here we display the Fastlane watermark so that the customers are aware of the service and can click on the info icon for more information. On my mock website, I have a loading graphic that I make disappear and I display the email field and card buttons with this function here. It's just a helper function. We will add an event listener to the email input for Fastlane's authentication lookup and a one-time event listener for the debit credit card button to render and display the card fields. This button just saves vertical space on the page. You can choose to display the card fields initially or trigger them with a button click. You can pass a few options before displaying the fields. If you have already collected shipping from your customer, like on another page or before getting to this option, then go ahead and pass the shipping info here in this code that I have commented out. It's as easy as including it into the config object and then passing it into the Fastlane component function and rendering it here. Just a quick note, this video is demoing the quick start integration for Fastlane, which has the card fields, billing fields, as well as the billing input validation and the user interface for displaying a stored card already out of the box. You can opt for a more flexible Fastlane integration that's also outlined in our docs. Once the fields are rendered, I have this setup payment handler, which all it does is add the proper event listener to submit the payment. If a guest payer is detected, whatever was filled out on that Fastlane form, we want to tokenize it into what you should already know with Braintree is a payment method nonce. And with that, we can process the payment on the server just as you already do with your nonces. If this is not a guest user, but this is a Fastlane user that passed authentication, then no need to tokenize anything since the user will not type out their card number, but we will simply give you the user profile data to use. To process the user info, we are simply grabbing the data from this variable, which I named profile underscore data and sending it to be processed. Taking a step back, when the user types out their email address, we are doing a simple email validation first to ensure it's a valid email string before we call the Fastlane lookup method. Here is the Fastlane lookup method. The responses are stored in a variable, and if there is a user matching, then we can handle it as an existing Fastlane user. Otherwise, we can treat this as a guest payer. For existing users, we want to tell Fastlane to authenticate them. If it's deemed by Fastlane that they need a one-time password, they'll get an OTP sent. Otherwise, if the user is already authenticated or passes authentication, we will get a succeeded message here. And this is where that profile data gets stored. It's in this variable, which is accessible by all of these methods. If they don't pass authentication or cancel out the auth window, we can still treat them as a guest payer and load the regular car fields for them to pay. In my project, I don't do much here. I just set this marker that it is in fact a guest payer, but you can add your own actions here as well. Lastly, for the front end code, we can process the payment by sending the payment method nonce to the server for running our charge payment method GraphQL mutation. I also send to the server the payment source of what was used to pay. In the fetch body call, you really only need the amount and the nonce, but of course, pass any and all other data that's relevant to your website's use case. Once I get a response back, I display the receipt. The next method here is to load the PayPal buttons, but we won't go over these much. And then below that are the rest of the helper methods or just UI methods outside of Fastlane functionality. Let's conclude this video by taking a peek at what I just explained in the server side calls. We really only need to go over the complete order route now, as I've already explained the auth routes. This route calls the charge payment method function directly. In the charge payment method API call, you can see my base or foundational purchase info that I start with here the amount that we got passed from the browser, the line items, depending if a shipping address is actually passed, it's determined if a physical product or not. You can just override my demo code here though and always make it one thing or make it another. Again, if shipping is passed, then more info gets appended to the GraphQL schema here. Ideally, these shipping details would come from your server or changed to your options given here and not leave these placeholder values. So make sure you adjust this. 
A quick reminder here again, this is all GraphQL specific and it's just meant for a quick project file API call, but GraphQL is not needed at all for this. Keep your setup as it is and use this as a guide for your Fastlane integration. We map all the finalized variables in place. You can set the card statement descriptor here as well. And lastly, we charge the payment method. Down here, we show how we sanitize the responses based on payment method used. And then finally, we send that to the browser client to display the receipt or whatever else your website's process is in your checkout flow. These functions culminate into the experience that I demoed at the beginning of the video where you can offer your guest users an accelerated checkout flow. We have now successfully integrated Fastlane by PayPal using the Braintree integration.